This video was made for a simple purpose. Consider this part one of a duology for a grand series where I shall rant about the various issues about what makes the deserts and golden sun the weakest parts of the game, only there to detract rather than add outside of simple lore and plot reasons. With that being said, let's get into the reasons why the Suhala Desert falls flat. For the uninitiated who are not aware of the existence of this rather tedious and downright dreadful part of the game called the Suhala Desert, we'll be in for quite the ride as I'll provide a brief explanation of what the desert comprises of and the gimmicks that come with it. The name Suhala is a corruption of the name Sahara, which is what this horrid place is based off of, but what sets this place apart is what you need to go through, sand tornadoes in order to progress through the desert, and you need to reach your destination. Nothing odd about that, right? But that's where you would be wrong about it. And allow me to divulge on what makes this desert's gimmick being to douse the sand tornadoes to be the worst part about this already weak area in the game. One of the first crucial and fatal flaws that come with the sand tornado gimmick in the Suhala Desert is the lack of an in-game reminder for the player, which on the surface and through a first time play through doesn't seem so bad when you're consistently playing the game, but let's say you took a break from Golden Sun, maybe a month break, a week break, two weeks, more, three months, six months, and then you suddenly decide to come back and you never really entered foot into the desert or you entered into the desert only to get kicked out because you didn't pay attention to the dialogue, which I don't blame you because the dialogue itself is very bland, generic, and repeats the same point. But let's say you come back from the game after a very long hiatus and then eventually you find yourself thinking, hmm, how can I get past the desert? And what exactly can I do? And how will the game remind me to do that? Oh, and you might think to yourself, let's go talk to the villagers. Maybe they'll a helpful hint or two, something that could guide you along the way. But instead you're met with confusion when it comes to finding an answer in game because the game doesn't easily remind you you will have to search for that for hours or do a little bit of experimenting with various synergies the only easy and realistic ways you can find out how to progress in the desert is using external means such as looking at the wiki asking a friend going on YouTube to look through a walkthrough anything along those lines those are the only ways you're gonna be able to find a way to get past the Suhala desert and progress but with that being said let's talk Talk about what happens after you finish finding out how to get past the gimmick. So you finally figure it out. In order to get past the sand tornadoes, you need to use the Dao synergy, which you might think, oh, that was kind of obvious, even though it might not be if you haven't played the game in a while. But regarding all of that, you finally got past it. You're thinking, great, woohoo, nothing can stop me. I'm on top of the world. We're just going to douse through these tornadoes. It's going to be an easy area. And you might be even asking yourself, where's the challenge at? Oh, that's where you're wrong. Because you see, my friend, if you were to pay attention for more than like one second you'll see that there is a giant sand lizard standing on two feet bipedal looking ass lizard staring you down about to wipe your party and saying hey what's up oh and if you try to run away from that sand lizard that you obviously can't really fight at the moment or you don't have the means to easily beat it down or you just want to get through it because it's like why should i fight this when i can just run oh yeah you can't it's a required mini boss so every time you want to go anywhere in the desert you have to fight them and let's not forget to mention that let's say you didn't douse the tornado in time guess what happens you get sent back out into the world map and booted out of the desert which is something i'll get into later on in this video and just in case you decided to re-enter the desert thinking oh i already cleared them once thinking to yourself hey i don't gotta deal with those required mini bosses anymore guess what they respawn every single time you go through that area they respawn and they'll be waiting for you but let's move on into the next topics of this video. Do you remember how I said that if you couldn't douse the tornadoes in time or you just stood within them that you would get booted back into the world map? Yeah that's really dumb and it's really punishing for the fact that while it is time consuming if you didn't figure out the gimmick and you were really determined to find it out in game and you couldn't pick up on the hints well you could easily waste a good 30 minutes to an hour depending on how determined you are to get past these sand tornadoes and sure you might have thought okay we're gonna get through them 
problem. This might be a walking through mechanic. You might have to use different types of synergy. But if you don't think of using the Dao synergy at that time, it's a very obscure thing to miss. And I can understand how you could spend 30 minutes to even an hour trying to figure out how to pull off a gimmick fast enough. And if your reflexes aren't good enough, this could also be quite punishing for you as a player. Which conveniently enough leads me into my next topic and the overarching argument for the entire grand duology. The main issues that I have when it comes to these types of gimmicks is that they're only used once in isolation and never to be seen again anywhere else. You can't even call them a mechanic because they only show up one time. It's only there to inconvenience and hinder you one time. And to the unknown viewer out there, you might be thinking, oh, well, they're just experimenting. And that is true, they're experimenting, but they had two deserts to experiment with. This being the second, they could have easily left it at one or not included the second desert at all, which in itself is pretty excessive. Why have two desert areas and a rather large world? I get it, you're trying to make different areas diverse, but if you wanted to show off diversity, you could have done it in a better way than having two desert areas with two very annoying gimmicks, which makes sense for lore reasons, but doesn't make sense for the player's convenience or time. And to cue off this entire section, let's talk about the major weak points of the desert. Those being there are no puzzles in the desert outside of the Repetuous Tornado gimmick, and how the setting itself is pretty bland and boring. Without the gimmick being there, the desert loses all identity of itself. And you might think, come on, there's more to the desert than just the gimmick. No, outside of the crazy high encounter rates that's already baked in into the game and traversing through an area, no, there's nothing that's really substantial about the Suhala Desert. The Suhala Desert is quite literally fight through mini bosses until you fight big boss that can take you to Crossbone Island if you stand in the big old red tornado long enough. There's no real puzzles for you to accomplish, no real uses of other synergies. It's quite literally brute forcing your way through the desert, which might be fine for some people who want to go do that. But honestly, I kind of came into Golden Sun thinking, hey, I'm going to be doing puzzles. And you know, maybe not for every area, but at least 90% of the areas will have thought provoking and engaging puzzles that really get the player excited decided to pick up and play the game. But that's just not the case with these deserts. Instead, it's quite the opposite. A lot of these deserts just have you brute force your way using some dumb, stupid gimmick that'll only be used once and never used again, which is honestly disappointing because these gimmicks could have been free to and never find where they would be decent mechanics and put in well in other areas. Okay, up until this point, I've been pretty much just bashing the desert throughout the entire time, absolutely slandering it to some people. It might even be their favorite area and I'm doing this injustice. And oh, you're just talking because you just want to talk and complain about something for content. True, but guess what? I already know you would have said something like this. So instead, I thought to myself that, hey, just mindlessly bashing at this whole desert and expressing my disdain and hatred for this area wouldn't be entertaining by itself. No, 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 no. What I need to do is simple. All I need to do is take you guys into the solutions and concepts I have to fix up the Suhala Desert. So let us discover those solutions in the next section, shall we? Instead of just mindlessly bashing the desert, allow me to throw out a few concepts to act as solutions. For example, how about encouraging the player to use the Dows and Tornado synergy to uncover secret pathways and find hidden items or enemies? A simple gamble, but something that's a present motif with Golden Sun's risk and reward system, which I'll cover in another video. This will not only act as a way to incentivize the player to progress in the area, but it will also give the said substance and sense of identity it so heavily lacked previously when it relied on a gimmick. That's not all that engaging or entertaining in the long run. Another way to fix the desert is to use reveal, similar to the last desert being the Lamakan Desert, but have it be ancient Egyptian artifacts or items left in the sand, and one could have a cursed monster in there or a blessed item. Once again, that risk or reward system that permeates the game as a whole is still present and not a one-off gimmick used for the sake of one area. These two solutions alone I listed off could have benefited both of the deserts by giving them a sense 
sense of identity that's positive towards the player while providing substance through risk and reward puzzles, which in turn leads to an engaging area and the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed my deep-rooted disdain for one-off gimmicks in these two holiday desert for part one of my glorious duology, ranting about the weaknesses of the worst areas in the game. And if you want me to release part two before next week, then do me a favor and leave a comment down below and get this video to 20 likes and I'll release part two of this duology series before next week. And remember, Steelies, don't get caught.